Welcome, Star Kids and friends. Today's passage is James 3, 1 to 12. In the previous passage, we read about the importance of the church living out their faith with their actions, especially when it comes to how we treat one another. Our works are often accompanied by our words. And in today's passage, we learn about the importance of controlling our tongue. Words can cause a lot of damage. And James warns us about what can happen if we don't tame our tongues. Before we read today's passage from the Bible, let's pray and ask God to teach us. Dear God, thank you for your word. As we read today's passage, we pray that you would teach us something about you and help us to be more like Jesus. We love you. Amen. Okay, let's read along with me in your Bible, and we're going to start at chapter 3, verse 1. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways, and anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course on one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. What is God teaching you today in that passage? Take some time to think about it and maybe read it over again. And then write down what you learned in your journal. And don't forget to share what God is teaching you with someone else. <laughs> 